أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار حياكم الله dear brothers and sisters to this talk which is the manners and characters of the Muslim and indeed Allah Ta'ala have addressed this issue in the Quran in many many uh, ayat, many verses of the Quran because Allah Ta'ala only likes from his awliya or slaves, worshippers, the ones who love Allah and act just for the sake of Allah. He Allah Ta'ala likes from them to be upon the best manners and characters in this worldly life. Not only with, the, with their own brothers, but even with the others. As what we are going inshallah to see when we go through a couple of uh, verses from the Quran and the ayat, uh, sorry, and the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu The first, <coughs> first one we uh, inshallah ta'ala talk about is what Allah Ta'ala said to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as in Surah Al-Qalam, Noon. He Allah Ta'ala said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ and indeed you, O Muhammad, is only upon the perfect manners and characters. Look to what Allah Ta'ala is saying and describing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He Allah Ta'ala describing him as one who has the best manners and characters. If we come to Look to the biography of Muhammad Sallallahu Even before Islam, we find the people, the, the idolaters in Mecca used to call him and describe him and attribute him as As-Sadiq Al-Amin. As-Sadiq Al-Amin. Two main characters if found in a person, every other character and manner would be perfect. Sadiq means honest, you never tell lie. And Amin means trustworthy, you never deceive, you never cheat. And these are the, the uh, foundations, these two are the foundations of all the manners and characters. So if you can't maintain these two, which are the, 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 the most important ones, and at the same time, they are the most difficult ones to implement, to fulfill. But if you work on yani, them to, to have them with you all the time, to be upon them all the time, then every other man and character would be easier. So Allah Ta'ala, Describe the Prophet Sallallahu that he is among the best quality of manners and characters. And the kuffar of Quraysh, the disbelievers at the time of Quraysh, they used to attribute him and name him as Sadiq, Al Amin, the most honest one, the most trustworthy one. Now, in the Quran, in Surah Fussilat, in the ayah, number uh, 34 and 35 there Allah Ta'ala there Allah Ta'ala says to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ the good deed and the evil deed cannot be equal cannot be equal Neither in the eye of people, nor in the scale on the job reduction. Even in the eye of people, as we said, that the kuffar of Quraysh used to call Muhammad 
As-Sadiq Al-Amin. Because this, how he was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This way is how he was. Naam? So Allah Ta'ala is saying, وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيَّعَةُ The good deed and the bad deed cannot be equal. اِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ اِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ And then Allah Ta'ala said, repel the evil with one which is better. With one which is better. So Allah Ta'ala is Allah Ta'ala is ordering the uh, believers to be upon the best manners and characters in dealing with others who cause them troubles, who cause them problems. Not only with their own brothers, of course, with your own brother, you need to be on the best of manners and characters. As what we are going, inshallah, to see in a while in regard to uh, the in, in regard to what Allah Ta'ala attributed Muhammad Sallallahu and the believers uh, in this issue. But even with the enemies, even with the uh, those who yani, try to uh, cause us problems, and Allah Ta'ala is saying to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so rebel or push away the evil deed which comes to you from the others with what? Not with another evil. There is a saying, there is a poem in Arabic says Ala la yajhalan ahadun alayna fanajhala fawqa jahl al-jahilina Let no one be arrogant with us that as, as we are going to be more arrogant than anyone else. That is not correct. No, 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 that's not correct. You are told to act as what Allah Ta'ala wants you to be. Not as what you want yourself to be. It is what Allah Ta'ala want you to be to be a man of manners and characters. And that's why Allah Ta'ala there in, in, in other surah, in other surah, Ya Allah Ta'ala uh, commanded his prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with this thing. He said, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Oh Muhammad, Oh Muhammad, Khudil Afwa. Take forgiveness. Take, choose forgiveness all the time. Forgive. Forgive. And now when we always hear the word forgiveness, what comes in mind? Enemy. Troublemakers. Not people who love you. Of course, people who love you, you don't you don't have any, they don't have anything to forgive them. Because they always do you something good. Something you like. You don't forgive them, but you thank them for it. You forgive those who are wrongdoers and those who wrong you, oppress you. Those are the ones who Allah Ta'ala said to the, Muslim, to the Prophet Sallallahu and of course it's a call to every Muslim. Choose the forgiveness. Choose the forgiveness. وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ And enjoying the good and enjoying the good should be in a good way because some people like to enjoy the good for example to call someone to Islam or to call someone to um, uh, to um, yani practicing a Muslim to practicing or like that but they start and instead of uh, yani commanding or enjoying the good in a good way, they start chasing people by their all by their by their bad manners and characters, by their harshness. And that's why Allah Ta'ala said to Prophet Muhammad 
ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لم فض من حولك and if you were to be hard and harsh they would have scattered from around you and left you alone so we have to remember all these things when we deal with our brothers and when we deal with the others as we see for example today the violations come when we when, when muslims deal with both people the brothers and the enemies with both they act harsh whenever things do not come al along with what they believe or what would they like or and that is wrong that is wrong Allah Ta'ala is saying to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam choose the forgiveness command or, or enjoying the good but meaning in a good way and just ignore and just ignore whatever uh, arrogance comes from the ignorance whatever arrogance that is seen from the ignorance you just ignore it you just ignore it as if they as they say as they say in arabic also they say uh, if every dog if every dog bark at my face i threw a stone on him then the dog is too generous with me I'm going to, to, to throw a lot of stones and I'm going to waste my time. Let the dog bark. If the dog bark doesn't harm you. Nah? So, yani, you need to uh, take these guidances from the Quran and the Sunnah and act upon them. Otherwise, how you can be Muslim? Muslim means it comes from the word Islam, and Islam means to submit all of your case to your Lord, to the way of your Prophet. How he dealt, you deal. How Allah Ta'ala commanded him, you are also commanded with the same command. So when Allah Ta'ala says to Prophet Muhammad Afwa, take the forgiveness, choose the forgiveness, wa'mur bil urf and command or enjoin the good. In a good way, and ignore the arrogance that comes from the ignorance. If this is addressed to Muhammad وسلم, who is already on that, even before the prophethood, even before he, he received the prophethood, he was on that already. As I told you, the people of Quraysh, the Kuffar of Quraysh, used to call him the most honest, the most trustworthy one, trustworthy one. And that's why when the flood Demolish the Kaaba before Islam, and that time Muhammad Sallallahu was a young man, not yet known as a prophet. He himself did not know that he, become, he will become a prophet, but he was upon the best manners and characters in all. I don't say in all Makkah, but in amongst all mankind at that time. Now, so he Sallallahu was selected by the people of Mecca, the Kuffar, to be the one, and they rebuilt the Kaaba. They rebuilt the Kaaba. When they came to put the black stone, they had an argument. They had an argument. Who should put the black stone in its place? Who will reposition it? Have the honor. Huh? The honor to put it here. Yeah. The honor. Exactly. Who who will, who will be that honorable person because it is something big. And every tribe in Mecca said, no, it's our right to do it. We are the most honorable ones. We are. And then they said, okay, we had no agreement on which tribe will be the one who bought it. Let us say that the first man comes from the gate will be the one who bought it. And it was Muhammad Sassan. They said, as Sadiq al Amin came. The honest and trustworthy one came. So khalas, let us accept him to be the one who repositioned the black stone. 
See to what limit, you know. So Allah Ta'ala have uh, taught his prophet and messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be upon the best manners and characters. And that's why he Allah Ta'ala said in this ayah of Surah Fussilat, وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّعَةُ The good deed and the evil deed are not going to be equal. Now, اِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ Repel against the evil with what is good. Not with what, what is evil. Not like it today. People, they do something wrong to us, we do something wrong to them. No, that's not correct. That's not correct. Let me just, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to open up any um, arguments about any political issues. But I will, I will put some examples the way I understand them. Uh, and, and I'm sorry, no arguments, whether you like it, you don't like it. If you don't like it, just throw it away. Like if you don't, you never hear it, okay? The incident that existed, uh, I think last month or beginning of this month, in, in, in Latwish, in London, where a, an African Muslim slaughtered uh, a soldier in the street. So, and then he, he, he exposed himself on the YouTube saying that this is because of what they do in our lands. And that's not correct, Akhi. That's not correct. That is not correct at all. That is not from Islam. At all, not from Islam. First of all, this is a, 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 a type of um, deception. You all are here, living here, Muslims. And this government, I'm not recommending them, and this is the, the fact and the truth that every one of you says. They are giving you your rights. They are giving you your rights. So it's not correct to come and, and make corruptions here. And deception and, you know, cheating. You know what I mean? Maybe that policeman was in that street to protect their children when they cross the road. And stop the vehicles for them to cross. The river was to, to, to be killed. That's not correct. That's not correct. Rasulullah never did anything like that. Never ever. However, when the Yahud broke their oaths and obligations with Rasulullah because they had an agreement with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he came to Mecca, as to Medina, they had an agreement with him. He leave them and they leave him. He does not attack them and they don't support anyone else against him. But what happened later on when the uh, atheists came to them, they agreed to, because they thought that they are going, I mean, it's the end, the finish, the finishing. So, but, but above all that, when he came to their lands in Khaybar, 700 kilometers away from Medina, and he cut all this distance walking in the very hot summer, and he came to their land, he gave the flag to Ali, Ibn Abi Talib, and he said to him, you take a group of the Soldiers, you go with the Mujahideen, you go with them to where the Yehud are, to their land. And first of all, he told them, don't go fast, because when, when, when the army move fast, they will make noise. And this noise will terror people. He said, don't terror them. Don't terror them. No? He said, go quiet. And when you come to their land, don't begin fighting. But call them to La ilaha illallah. Above all that, he saw Salam made something yani, um, as, as a precaution. He, 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 he was afraid that 
maybe the Yahud say something or do something that make Ali yani, lose his control, lose his temper and begin the, the fight. What did he do to protect Ali from that? He said to him, remember, if Allah brings any of them to Islam through you, this would be better for you than Humar al -Niam. Look to that very noble manners and characters from Rasulullah These people who did, you know, they, they invited him to a, yani a meal, a sheep that barbecued, but they put poison in it. They, in Medina, sent someone to climb over one of the houses of Medina and wait for Rasulullah to come in a cross beneath and threw big stone over his head. They did many, many things, but Rasulullah was patient with them. Above that, when it came to the time of fighting, he told Ali, don't begin fighting. Don't begin fighting. These good manners brought many of them to Islam. You know what? One of them, one of them was a woman who became mother of believers, Safiya bin Tuhay ibn Akhtab, who Rasulullah killed her father, her uncle, and her husband. And after all that, he gave her the choice. If you want, I free you because she was now a war prisoner. He said, if you want, I free you and I marry you. So she is the wife of Rasulullah. So I said them. Or if you want, I let you go back to your people. She said, no, I want to be with you. Why? She wasn't scared, but because she knew that she will never find a better man than him in everything. In everything. First is Rasulullah. Second, the manners and uh, characters that she saw from him. She knew that he was the prophet. Yes, yeah, she knew. She knew because there was a dialogue between her father and, and his and uncle. Yeah. When she was young. Yes. She them to yeah. But what I mean to say now, she saw a lot of the good manners. Now, even if he's Rasulullah, even, even if she knew that he is the messenger, she already had pain because she saw her father, her uncle, and her uh, husband were killed. And normally we are human. At least yani, she would say, no, I will stay, but I don't want to marry you. But because she knew that, yani, she saw the beautiful manners and characters. It's not the only incident. It's not the only incident. Sauda bin Zama was an old woman who Rasulullah married after her husband passed away to give her some shelter. But she knew that he is younger than her. And he is looking at it to enjoy. So she came to him and she said, Ya Rasulullah, I know that I'm old. And I know that you love Aisha because she's young. But don't divorce me. I want to be with you all the time. Take my day and night and give it to Aisha. You know, there are a lot of incidents. There are Thumama, a man who was the head of a tribe in, in, in Najd who fought against Muslims very badly. He was arrested as a war prisoner and brought to Masjid al-Nabawi. And he was uh, tied to one of the pillars in the Masjid al-Nabawi. And the Prophet Wasallam used to come to him every day and offer Islam to him. This is Islam, would you accept? And he says, no. No, I don't want to accept Islam. So the Prophet Wasallam looked to the Sahaba and he said, be kind to your guest. And be kind to your guest here is not a word like it used today. And when, when people have someone like this, be kind means beat him as much as you can. La, be kind means be kind. And they used, they used to be kind with him, feed him. And three days, three days in a row. And then the Prophet ﷺ, on the third day when he offered Islam to him and he said no, he said, okay, Akhwan, release him. What is the benefit of holding him here? 
So they released him. The man left the mosque and disappeared for a while and then came back when Rasulullah with the Sahaba were sitting together. Was and he, did he come to assassinate the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Did he not? La la, this is not the one. This is not. This is Tumama. Tumama was arrested in the in the battle in Najd. No, he, why did they tie him? Because he, he came to actually kill. Him. La la la, not not this one. That is a different one. Oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I'll come to the story. So uh, this man Tumama, the one you're talking is from Mecca. Yeah, that's yeah. another person. But yeah, okay. Tumama as well. No 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 no. Tumama was arrested. The, yes, the Prophet ﷺ sent a group of the Muslims oh, yeah. towards Najd. Taking him they, prisoner. Yes, take a, they, they have taken him as a war prisoner. So Tumama left the masjid and disappeared for a while and came back and he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasul. The Prophet ﷺ asked him, he said, What make you to do that? Three days I offered Islam to you and he refused. He said, I wanted to accept Islam from day one, but I was afraid that people say that he only accepted Islam to protect himself. So when you released me, I decided to come back. See, to the good manners and characters, and we have to, now it's a war, it's a war. It is a war, and he's a war prisoner, and not any one, he is, he is the, uh, the head of the of the army, the other man, which the brother just uh, yani asked about, or talked about, mentioned, he is from Mecca, and he was healed by Umayyah ibn Khalaf, saying, Safwan. Huh? Safwan. "What's Safwan? What's Safwan? Yeah, he was saying, if it is not, or oh, yani children that I have and some debts I have." Loans, I would have gone to Muhammad and killed him. So one told him, Okay, you go and I will carry all of your responsibilities. Your children are mine and your debt is mine. I'll pay it back. So he grabbed his sword, jumped on his horse, and he came to Medina alone. When he came to the mosque of the Prophet, by the way, he had a son. Already with the Muslims. He was, he was arrested, but he became Muslim. So he came and he entered the mosque. Umar ibn Khattab saw him. He said, Ya Rasulullah, this man, I can see the evil on his eyes. He came for something evil. The Prophet said, Leave him. What did you come for? He said, uh, Listen, uh, well, he is Safwan ibn Asal. He is Safwan ibn Asal. So he said, what you come for? He said, I came uh, for my son. He said, no. But you sat to so and so by the Kaaba, and you, and he heard you saying this, and he said this. Then the man said, by the one who sent you as a messenger, I bear witness that there is no one worthy of Allah, uh, worthy of worship but Allah, and you are the messenger of Allah. And he accepted Islam. Many, many, many incidents. Zayd ibn Sa'ana, a Jewish uh, priest, who Rasulullah borrowed some money from. And they set a, a, a date for it to be paid back. Zayd ibn Sa'ana came to Rasulullah before the date. Before the determined date. And he found the Prophet amongst his Sahaba. Then he came and grabbed him from his clothes like this. He said, Ya Muhammad, give me my money back. As you, the family of Abdul Muttalib, people who deny the rights of others. Umar ibn Khattab turned very angry. He said, O oh, enemy of Allah, you do that to Rasulullah while I am here seeing that, by Allah I'll break your neck. 
The Prophet Sallallahu said to him, Ya Umar, we don't want that. It was better for you to ask him, to advise him, asking his money in a good way. And I was in need for you to advise me to pay back his money. The man said, look, I knew that you are the messenger, but I just wanted to make sure, as in the, in the Old Testament, in the Torah, it is written that the messenger, the seal messenger, the last messenger, would be somebody who is upon patience. And I just wanted to examine your anger and your patience. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah, and you are the messenger of Allah. And he became Muslim. And he became Muslim. Look to the good manners. Look to the good manners. Now, so the Prophet, so Allah Ta'ala said, now, uh, in this ayah, in, this, in these two ayat of Surah Fussilat, Allah Ta'ala guided us all to three main characters. One is patience whenever we are angry. And to forgive. To control your anger and forgive. The second is not only to forgive. Not only to forgive. But to, to do good to that person who tried to harm you, who uh, abused you, accused you, who did whatsoever, wronged you. It's not only to leave him and forgive him and ignore, but even to do good to him. Even to do good to him. Always the good manners are cause of people accepting the truth. Always. I tell you a story which happened to one of the scholars of, uh, of this time. Imam Abdulaziz bin Baz, rahimahullah, one day, uh, one night, first of all, he's, he was blind. He doesn't see. So he used to stand for prayer, or night prayer long. And they used to put a, a bell button by his feet. So if he feels anything, just press the button and they know that he needs something or he needs some help. So he, when he was praying, while everyone is sleeping, he heard a noise of something dropped or somebody jumped or like that. He could not recognize what it is, but he pressed the button. And then he heard a lot of voices, like screaming and fighting, and, and then out of a sudden, everything gone. Quiet. So he finished his two rakat, then he pressed the button again. They came. He asked them, what was it? They said it is a thief. A thief who jumped in. He said, okay, where is he now? He said, we took him to the police. He said, no, 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 go bring him for me. They went and brought the thief. The thief was Muslim. It, was, it happened in Taif. The thief was Muslim. Was one of the um, a, a Muslim communities there in, in Taif. Anyway, they brought the man. The Sheikh sat him down and asked him, why did you do that? He said, yes, Sheikh, my mother is sick. And in, in my country, back home. And she needed for operation, and I don't have the, the money. So I decided to jump and to break in and steal and rob the beauty and gas, you know, the cylinders, and sell them. So I can have the money and send it to my mother to do the operation. So it seems that he's not a normal thief, but uh, there was a reason behind it. The sheikh said to him, okay, what is uh, the cost of the operation? He said, 
as I remember, and he gave a number. Then the sheikh said, okay, um, what is the cost of your ticket going and coming? He said this, he gave, he said, okay, take this money for the operation, this money for your ticket, and this money for your stay there. And when you come back, when you return, you pay me back, take it as a loan. So the man was very happy because he said to him, I tried I need to get a loan from anybody, no one, and he accepted. So he, the man traveled to his country, did the operation a month or, a, or two months, he came back. When he came back, he came to the mosque where the sheikh is. He met the sheikh and he reminded the sheikh, sheikh immediately remind, remembered him. He said, how is your mother? She, he said, mashallah, she's okay now. She did the operation, mashallah. She's okay, she had it and she's okay. Um, then the man said, but yes, sheikh, I have some remaining of the money. You take it and the rest I'll pay them yani monthly. I don't have money. He said, no, you take this money and all what is spent is for you. But don't go back to the tip again. If you need any money, you come back to me. The man cried. The man said, Ya Sheikh, I have, a, I have one last request. Say what it is. He said, you accept me to work with you. Sheikh said, but I don't, I don't need, yani, I, have a lot, I have plenty of workers. He said, no, please, even if ju I just yani, guide you, take you to the masjid, to whatever you want. The Sheikh said, okay, khalas, no problem. And then he wrote to his sponsor, please transfer his sponsorship to us. We need him. So they did. And the man remained with the Sheikh until the Sheikh died. You know what? When the Sheikh died, the man already became a alim. He's a alim. Compiling books, giving talks. You see how the good manners, very good manners and characters, you know? So we need, we need to learn these things from the Prophet Sallallahu the companions. Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira, one night like this, and he heard somebody jumped into his house. Then when he finished his prayer, the man didn't find anything to take from the house of Abu Huraira. Anyway, Abu Huraira is poor. He only took, I think, a uh, small thing. And he was running, escaping. And Abu Huraira was chasing him. But look to that. Abu Huraira was calling the man. It is for you, it is for you. And the man, thinking that he only said that to catch him. Abu Huraira said, by Allah, I was only scared that he stands before Allah carrying this sin. I didn't want him to carry this sin. So he said, this is for you, this is for you. Look at that. And many, many, many other yani, examples. But we want to go through yani, the ones yani, Rasulullah taught us and how the Sahaba described Rasulullah um, Anas ibn Malik says in the hadith agreed upon that Rasulullah was the best of mankind or, or, or he had the best characters amongst mankind. And when he says mankind, it is not only who Anas have seen, but believe me, mankind since the first man to the last. You would never ever find somebody who is with this type of characters and manners that Rasulullah was with. Yani one, one day he, he, um, he married a woman. He proposed her and she accepted, her family accepted and this. And they did the wedding. When he came to her room, she said, "A'udhu billahi minka." I seek refuge from you. He said, "Khalas, you ask refuge from who can provide it. You go back to your family." That's it. He did not curse her. He did not insult her. He did not beat her. He did not say nothing. Yes, khalas, you go. You know what people of Makkah did to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Many, many, many things. Big oppression. They torched all of his 
companions while he is seeing, like uh, uh, Sumayya, Yasir, uh, Bilal, many others. They even, uh, when he was prostrating by the Kaaba, they brought some dirt and put it on his back. They brought him in a, in, in a band in an area called Sha'ab Abi Talib between two mountains, so they cannot come out. They put them there. Him, all those believers with him, and even the non-believers who supported him, like Abu Talib, and they put them all. Now I'm in that area, and they banded them from coming out, and nobody to go to them or even give them any food or whatsoever. Three years. Three years. No? And then, he, Allah Ta'ala gave him the command to leave Mecca. There is a reason for, for why he left Mecca. It's a, it's a lesson for us. When we, the Muslims, cannot yani, live in a land, we have to leave it. We are not to the land. Yani, there is no a land which is more holy than Mecca. Even Palestine, even Baytul Maqdis, is not more holy than Mecca. But Rasulullah left Mecca. Why? Is it because they are weak? Type in Badr, they were weak. What happened in Badr so they win? Allah sent the angels. Why Allah didn't send the angels when they were in Mecca? To turn it, yani for them to be the more powerful? It is because Allah Ta'ala teaching us. We don't we don't insist, no, we stay, we stay, we stay in the land. Even if the, if the woman rap, raped, even if the souls, yani, if, even if the people killed, even if the houses burned. No, that's not correct. That's not correct. For what? Land is land. Wherever you go, land is land. Now, so Rasulullah left Mecca. They chased him. They followed him. They made a prize. 100 heads of camels. For whoever bring Muhammad sallam, alive or death. And they came chasing him. Then, on the fifth year of Hijrah, he came with 1,400 Sahaba for Umrah, not for fighting. Just wanted to perform Umrah. They did not even allow them to enter Mecca. They came out to boundaries of Mecca. And they said, no, you can't come. They are already in the Ihram. They said to him, you go back this year, you come back next year. It's not an easy thing. Ten days travel walking from Medina to Mecca, ten days. Rough roads. If you don't know Mecca and Medina, even today we're asphalted and like that nice roads, it's still difficult. Imagine how it was during the time of Rasulullah. All it was, you know, it was volcano area. It was all, it is until now, covered with lava, rocks. Very hot, very sharp, very rough. So they used to cut all this distance walking. It's not an easy thing. And then they are rejected, go back. He saw Salam, went back. When he came on the eighth year of Hijrah and conquered Mecca, he did not attack them, yani, uh, <coughs> Um, what we say, yani, huh? he, he did not surprise them. He came first and he, 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 he came in Asfan. And he sent his uncle Abbas, go and bring me Abu Sufyan and the people. Don't tell them that I sent you, just bring them, let them see. And then he divided the army into groups. Everyone carried a different color flag. And then he made them, he told Abbas, bring, when you bring uh, Abu Sufyan, go with him up on that mountain so you can see the, down the valley. And you know when the valley is dry, if you walk, you make a lot of dust and noise. So he made those and he groups walk into that valley, making noise and dust, carrying different color flag. Abu Sufyan was asking, who's this? He said, this is tribe so and so. They go, who's this tribe, so and so tribe? And he said, are we people of Mecca going to fight all the Arab? 
It's not possible. It's not possible. So why Rasulullah did it? He did not want to begin fighting. He just want to terror them, not for terrorism, just to terror, to terror them to accept the peace, the conciliation. Look at that. Today they terror people not to make them accept peace, to terror them, to make them terror. But Rasulullah terror them only to uh, scare them to 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 um, to uh, make them accept peace. No? So they then he came and, and, and he sent someone to Mecca before him, declaring, "He whoever enters the Masjid Al Haram is safe. He whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan is safe." He whoever enters his house and locks his door is safe, even if he stays in his own religion. When he entered Mecca after all that, he heard one of the Muslims saying, Al yawma yawm al malhama. Today is the day in which the flesh is going to be cut in peace. Then he said, No. Al yawma yawm al marhama. Today the day of mercy. And then number of the kuffar were arrested and he called the rest of them come they came by the Kaaba he said to them after all what you did what do you think I'm going to do with you now they said well you are a humble brother and a humble nephew he said then you go you are all free you go you all you are all free you know what this any consequence Abu Sufyan embraced Islam. When you, when, you, when you mention this name, you have to remember the Battle of Uhud. Al-Ahzab. This all uh, were under the leadership of Abu Sufyan. The Battle of Badr was because of Abu Sufyan. He did not participate, but he was the cause of it to happen. Because he was on the caravan. But the Battle of Uhud, he was the leader of the army. The Battle of Al-Ahzab, he was the leader of the army. Now Abu Sufyan came to Islam. Abu Sufyan came to Islam. And then his son Muawiyah came to Islam. One of the very clever uh, yani, uh, companions. Uh, I don't mean companions, but I mean yani, Qaid Harbi, Qaid Askari. Uh, military, uh, yeah, military leaders or military. Uh, command, commander's tolerant. Naam. He came to Islam. Ikrimah ibn Abi Jahl, the son of Abu Jahl, came to Islam. Many, many. Many, even the children of Abu Lahab came to Islam. And that is why, and that is why he, وسلم, when he came down from Taif, after people of Taif rejected his call, and, and, and they stoned him to bleeding, on the way back to Mecca, Jibreel came to him along with the angel of uh, the mountains and he said that your Lord Allah is uh, conveying salam to you and he says this is the angels of uh, mount, the angel of mountains who is responsible of mountains command him with whatever you want the angel of mountains said if you want I collapse the two mountains of Mecca on the people of Mecca finish them خلاص. they finished no new life yalla. new history he said no but I want Allah to bring out of their backs, meaning the offspring, who witness the oneness of Allah. And it happened. Because of this, yani, uh, yani this mercy, because of this tolerance, because of this gentleness. One day he saw Salam was sitting along with Aisha, in Medina, and one of the Yahud came. And he said, Assamu alayka ya Muhammad. In Hebrew, Assam means death. But it looks, when it is pronounced, it looks like Assalamu in Arabic. So he said, Assamu alaykum ya, Assamu alayka ya Muhammad. He said it in Arabic. He said it in Arabic. Assamu alayka ya Muhammad. The way I'm saying it now. The Prophet said, Wa alaykum, misla ma kultum. For you, as you said. 
Aisha knew what the Yehudi meant. And she was very angry. She said, Assamu alayka wal-la'na. She said, Sam is on you, death on you, and cursing of Allah, and the curse of Allah. Now, did she do anything which is, did she say anything which is not true? La, la. The curse is upon them as in Surah Al-Fatiha. Ghayr al alim. All the ulama say maghdubi alim are the Yehud. And whoever does like them, know the truth and change it. Right? And Allah Ta'ala in the Quran said, غضب الله عليهم. Allah is already angry with them. Now, Rasulullah Sallallahu when he heard Aisha saying that, looked to what he guided her. He said, Ya Aisha, ما كان الرفق في شيء إلا زانه وما نزع من شيء إلا شانه. Oh Aisha, tolerance was never found in anything except it beautifies it. And was never extracted and taken out of anything except that it make it, it, leave, it leave it, it leaves it ugly. She said, Ya Rasulullah, didn't you hear what he said? Then he said, didn't you hear what I said to him? Alas, this one for one finish. And even Rasulullah did not say, Assamu alayka too. He did not pronounce it. He did not like to pronounce this bad word. Abun you. He did not like to pronounce the bad word. That's an important thing, ya khay. Maybe you, you say it's a revenge. I'm just taking my right. You'll not be considered wrong if someone say, for example, Assalamu alaikum, you say, Assalamu alaikum, too. You're not wrong, but it would be better if you say, Wa alayka, upon you, what you as, as what you said. This would be better. Now you keep your mouth out or away from the dirty words. You do, you do not pronounce it. Because this beautiful mouth, which only, which always say, La ilaha illallah, should never ever speak evil. Should never ever bring the evil out of it. How come? This, this mouth always say the beautiful words, the Quran, the Tasbih. So why you use it in, in, the, in the bad thing? And that's why yani, when Aisha described the Prophet she said, مَا كَانَ طَعَانًا وَلَا لَعَانًا وَلَا فَحْشًا بَدِيئًا He وسلم, was not someone who criticized people so often. وَلَا لَعَانًا He was not someone who cursed people so often. And he was not someone who used bad speech, bad words. But he was always facing the evil with the good. Whenever anybody yani, does any evil to him, he always faces it with something good. And we all agree that he is our example. So where is the submission? Where is the Following, where is the imitation to him, Sasan? We all agree that he is the most beloved man to us, but we are taking the example from others, not from him. That's a problem. That's a problem. Yani husn al khuluq or the manners and characters comes in many, many different uh, ways. Not only in the speech, the speech is one main thing. Speech is one main thing. Look, Today, for example, we have people who hate Islam and speak ill about Islam and they propagate many, many fabricated faults against Islam. There are some Muslims who stand doing the same thing against those people, religion or whatsoever. That's not correct. That's not correct. The Prophet ﷺ never did it. Never did it. However, when someone speaks to him in, in, in a bad way, he only responds in a nice way. And it's because Allah Ta'ala told him in Surah Fusrat as you hear. And he ﷺ said in the hadith, 
أتبع السيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن Follow the evil with the good deed Follow the evil deed with the good deed It will remove it And deal with people upon good manners Now good manners means a lot of things Means to be honest To be sincere To be trustworthy To be keen To be humble To forgive to help, to do all yani, the good things that people like from you. But it is, yani, it is, I don't say that if someone give you, yani, someone lashes you on one cheek, you give him the other. That's not correct. But yani, if you can't avoid whatsoever evil, you avoid it. You avoid it. And don't try to yani, make Islam look a religion of harshness. Islam isn't a religion of harshness. Islam isn't. Ya Ikhwan, even in the, in the battle where armies meet and face each other and yani, kill each other, there Rasulullah used to tell the Sahaba, إِذَا قَتَلَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيُحْسِنُ الْقَتْلَ when one of you kill his enemy or anything, they let him to kill in a proper way. Yani? Don't torture them. Huh? Don't torture them first. Yeah, don't torture them. Khalas, if you can't kill him with your sword, kill. Khalas, finish. Don't, yani, just cut in peace. That's not correct. Today, people, yani, you know the new rifles, guns, and we saw some images. Even in the bottle, they can't kill him with the bullet and that's it. Now they go and cut his head slowly, slowly, slowly and film it and bring it on YouTube or whatsoever. That's wrong. That's not from Islam, ya akhi. That's not from Islam. You both in the bottle, khalas, no problem. Either you kill him or he's going to kill you. But you kill with the proper mean. You have a gun, you kill with the gun. What for you slaughter? And what for you film it and put it on? No, that's not correct, ya akhwan. And Rasulullah used always to tell the, the, the armies when he sent them, don't kill an old, don't kill a woman, don't kill a child, don't kill a priest. And even if he's Christian, Jew, Buddhist, whatever, he's a priest, don't kill him. Don't destroy, don't destroy uh, the, the churches or temples or don't destroy them. Don't cut trees, don't destroy the environment. Today they come and burn the whole area. That's not correct. That's not correct. You know, these with these beautiful manners and attributes, Wallahi. And many times, if you go back to the yani, history of Islam, you will see it. And many times, the Muslim armies come to uh, the land that they want to yani, conquer. And they find the people yani, just accepting, khalas, yani, you come, you will come. They don't fight. Look to Baytul Maqdis. In Baytul Maqdis, when Abu Ubaidah, and they, they, they did not fight. And the priest there, the, 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 the head of the church, told Abu Ubaidah, we want to give the key of Baytul Maqdis to the Khalifa of Muslims. So he said, you give it to me. He said, no, no, no. I want to give it hand to hand to the Khalifa of Muslims. Of the Muslims. So Abu Ubaidah sent to Umar in Medina. Umar came all the way. Umar did not say, who he is, this man, to ask for me to come. Take it from him, from him, if he doesn't accept, kill him. He did not say that. He could have said that. But he did not say that. He came. Him, and he did not come in a big army. He came him, his camel, and his slave. And he used to yani, share the camel between them, the three. Not the two, the three. For certain... Yani period him riding 
the second period, the slave riding. The third period, the camel must walk along. So it rests. Servant, not slave. Huh? Servant. No, he was a slave. Slave, slave, Omar. Mamluk, Abd. Yeah. Huh? Khadim, Khadim. Khadim. Mawlah, 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 Abd, Abd, Mamluk. Uh, at that time, slavery was still there. Anyway, when it was just about entering uh, Baytul Maqdis, it was the turn of the, of the slave to ride. So that slave said, no, Amir al-Mu'mineen, what people are going to say? No, no, no. You ride and I'll, he said, no, no, no. Fair is fair. This is your turn. You ride. And he came, on the way there was a muddy area. Mud, a lot of mud. So Umar raised his clothes and he was walking into the mud. Abu Ubaidah came and saw him and said, Ya Amir al mumin what is this? What are people going to say? So let people say whatever they say. And, and by these beautiful manners and characters, people accepted Islam. People accepted Islam. They came to Islam. Today we are in a, in a bad need for these manners. And uh, yani very unfortunately, we are in need for these manners and characters between us rather it to be with others. Even between us, we don't see it. Very harshness and, you know, uh, wrong doings and wronging others. And that's in between us, the Muslims. What about it with others? With others, it is getting even worse. Yani for, for example, the Prophet ﷺ said, Addil amana ta'ila man itamarak. Give the trust to the one who trusted you. Wala takhun man khanak. Look at this. Wala takhun man khanak. And don't deceive the one who deceived you. Don't cheat the one who cheats you. Look. It's not one for one. Oh, he cheated me first. La, la, la. You're Muslim. You can, there are some things, yani for example, la samah Allah, may Allah not yani, uh, permit this to happen. But if, for example, somebody raped your daughter, is it okay to go and rape his daughter? That's not correct. That is haram. And it is haram for you to cheat, to deceive. Even if it is with someone who did this thing to you. It is haram. It's not permissible. But today what we see, a lot of deception, a lot of cheating, even amongst Muslims. Even amongst them, the Muslims themselves. And with the others. As I hear some people here, they, they deceive the government, they deceive even the works and workers and people, and they say these are only kuffar. Even kuffar. Who said that you can deceive the kuffar? Kuffar, Allah will, will punish them on the devil's action. It's not your responsibility. You don't deceive. This is not from our manners and characters. We have to be always honest. We have to be always sincere. We have to be always <coughs> clear and clean. We have. And the manners and uh, characters are needed in the household. In the household today, we have a lot of violations in the issue of manners and characters between the husband and wife, father and children, mother and children. We have a lot of violations. Neighborhood, again, workmates, country mates. We have a lot of violations that we need to and you stop and look. It's only a few days and then you are leaving this world. Wallah, it's only a few days. Even if it is years, they are only days. They are only days. And you're going to leave this life and never come back to it. And never have the chance to correct what you have damaged. You will never ever have the chance again. It is now this time where you should sit, learn how you worship Allah. 
our main problem is every one of us is a scholar. He doesn't want to go and learn. Because he knows. I know. How you know? He just pick any book and read and I understand. I understand. If that is the case, then why Allah Ta'ala commanded us in the Quran to go back to the ulama, to the scholars. So we have to sit and learn and read. It's not because you are an engineer that means you can understand Islam properly. No, no. It's not because you are a medicine doctor that means you are very clever, you can understand Islam. No, no, no. It's not correct. It's not correct. Imam al-Nawawi was, he started his life, you know Imam al-Nawawi, the one of Riyadh al-Salihin, the one who excellence a Muslim, he began his life as a, a medicine scientist. And he was perfect in that. But he said, I found my heart become dark, so I went to Hadith science. And I studied Hadith science. See, when he was excellent in, 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 uh, in, his field. in his field, but he could not understand Islam properly until he came and studied the Hadith. No? But look to the other side. The well-known, the famous scholar or, or scientist in, in medicine science was Ibn Sina. If you go to you know, the books of Bagrav and see what Ibn Sina was upon, he was upon you know, the worst type of creed, of belief. His intelligence did not you know, make it. It's not intelligence, it is guidance is only from Allah. It's only from Allah. Look at the intelligent scientist here in the West. Can anybody convince me that this microphone is, uh, is invented by, by Muslims? No. We always say, oh, Muslims are the ones who began this science. True, but which Muslims? And today, who are the ones doing this? They are non-Muslims. Guidance does not come from intelligence. Guidance comes from sincerity, from the heart. If you are sincere with Allah, Allah will guide you. Salman al-Farsi was not a scientist. He was a simple man. But he was sincere in seeking the truth. And he was asking the Lord who he did not know where he is. Salman's father was the priest in Paris. And he was the, the, the one responsible of the fire, the God that they worship. And he was about to be. And he, once his father passed away, he became the one. But Salman knew that this is wrong. He did not know who is the Lord. But he kept asking, Oh my Lord, guide me. Guide me. Allah guided him first to the Christian, to the Jews. Then to the Christians. Then he continued asking this thing from Allah. Until that Christian priest told him, There is going to be a messenger as the last and seal. And he is going to be in a land which is covered with lava. And it is land where palm trees are excessively planted. So he started asking. He started asking the people. Who knows this? He was in a sham. He was in a sham in, in Syria. Which is called Syria today. He was asking. Who knows this land? The caravan, one caravan said, we know it and we are going there for business. We have goods and... He said, okay, can you take me with you? He said, okay. Look to the plans of Allah when you are honest with Allah. When you are honest with Allah, see how Allah yani, guide you and reward you. Bilal, sorry, Salman, Salman al farisi was taken by that caravan to Medina. Once they reached Medina, they said that he is a slave. Who want to buy? A Jew from the people who were living in Medina, he bought him. Now, so, yani one, one, one may say, Tayyip, he asked Allah for many times, then he ended up as a slave. Yes. For, for, for wisdom, Allah Ta'ala 
decreed that Salman become a slave. Because when he is a slave, he cannot leave that land. He cannot leave that. And that time, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wasn't known yet. So, when he came, he came to that land, but there was no any signs of Muhammad. Maybe if he wasn't a slave, maybe he will leave that land looking for the land which he was told about. And then he missed Muhammad. But Allah Ta'ala planned it that he become a slave so he cannot leave Medina. Yesterday at that time called. And he remained there. He remained there. Now, when the Prophet Sallallahu came to Medina, Salman came to test him. Salman came to test him. He gave him a plate of dates. He said, Ya Muhammad, this is sadaqa, charity. The Prophet Sallallahu bought it and the Sahaba ate, but Rasulullah Sallallahu did not eat. Next day he brought him another plate. He said, this is a gift. He Sallallahu started eating. He said, okay, this is one. Then he tried to come from backside. The Prophet Sallallahu dropped the upper garment for him. And he said, you wanted to see it? And it is the sign that is written in the Old Testament about the last prophet. Then Salman accepted Islam and one day there was a fight between the Ansar and the Muhajirin. The Ansar said to the Muhajirin, Salman is one of us because Rasulullah appeared and came to Medina when Salman was with us. So he is from us. The Muhajirin said, no, no, no. Salman is not from the people of Medina. He migrated from Paris to Medina. And we migrated from Mecca to Medina. We all are migrants, so he's from us. The Prophet said, no, Salman is from us, Ahlul Bayt. Salman from us, the family of Muhammad See how he ended up? He asked Allah sincerely. He ended up to be counted as one of the family of Rasulullah we only need to ask Allah sincerely. The Prophet Sallallahu used to ask Allah even guiding him to the proper characters and manners. إِهْدِنِي لِأَحْسَنِ الْأَخْلَاقِ لَا يَهْدِي لِأَحْسَنِهَا إِلَّا أَنْتْ He used to say that in his dua. Oh Allah guide me to the best manners. No one guides to the best of them except you. And protect me from the evil manners. No one protects from, the, from them but you. That was in his dua. So all what you need to ask your Lord, guide you, guide you to the right path, guide you to what people differ upon, guide you to the manners and characters which he likes, and Allah will guide you. Allah loves his slave to beg him, to ask him, to subligate, to call him. So don't يعني, hesitate to ask Allah. Don't say, no one can give it to you except Allah. So ask Allah. Allah will give you. Will give you the, will give you the, the, the truth. Will give you the ability to distinguish between the, the truth that the people are defending. Today, today, how many sects are the Muslims? Many. And everyone is criticizing the other. Everyone. Who, which one is the right one? Everyone says, I am the right one. How will you know the truth? Only one way. Only one way. When you ask your Lord. When you ask your Lord. Ya Ikhwan Rasulullah Sallallahu He used to pray night prayers. And the subligation of opening in his night prayers used to be different from the other prayers. When he used to start the night prayers saying Allahu Akbar, he says Allahumma. And he said Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika. No, instead of that, the regular one we know, he used to say, Allahumma, Rabba Jibra'il, wa Mika'il, wa Israfil. Oh Allah, you are the Lord of Jibra'il, Mika'il, Israfil, Fatir al Samawati wal Ard. You are the one who creates, created the heavens and earth with no previous example. Alim al ghaybi wa shahada. You know, you are the one who knows the unseen and the seen. 
أنت تحكم بين عبادك فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون You are going to judge between your slaves for what they were differing upon اهدني لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك Guide me to the truth that the people have deferred upon by your permission إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم Indeed you guide whom you will to the straight path So if Rasulullah Rasulullah He is the one who Allah Ta'ala described in the Quran saying إنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم Indeed you guide to the straight path But yet he asked Oh Allah guide me to the straight path And that's why Allah Ta'ala made it obligatory upon every Muslim to say, to request from him guidance 17 times a day. Obligatory. Two times in Fajr. Four times in Dhuhr. Four times in Asr, these are 10. Three times in Maghrib. And four times in Isha, these are 17 times. The obligatory prayers. You all, you, you, you say in them all. And every individual rak'ah, when you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ So ask Allah with present heart. As many people recite this ayat 17 times a day and more, but they are absent mind. اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And they, they, just, they don't even give any concern to what they say. Now when you ask, when you ask Allah, you ask with present mind, begging your Lord, showing your need, showing your need, and by that Allah Ta'ala will guide you to the, to the proper belief, to the proper practicing, to the proper manners and characters, to everything good, Allah will guide you, and Allah will protect you. أَسْأَلُ اللَّهِ بِمَنِّي وَكَرَمِهِ أن يرزقني وإياكم العلم النافع والعمل الصالح وأن يجعلنا من من هم على أحسن الأخلاق وأن يجعلنا دعاة هداة بعلمنا وأخلاقنا ومعاملاتنا والله أعلم صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه